and tonight. So, let's talk. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about something that happened to me, or involving me, I guess, um, back in 2006. And this comes at the heels of a friend of mine going through something not extremely similar, but similar nonetheless. Um, let me set the back story for you. Um, my grandmother, that's my mother's mother, had just passed away. Even though there had been disagreements in the family, she was our rock. She was the thing that we always knew would be steady and stable. In fact, there was a, a running joke in the family because of how... <laughs> how tenacious she was that if uh, if there was ever nuclear war that she it would be her and the cockroaches no one was prepared for her to pass no one was prepared for her to um, to leave us and the way that she passed um, didn't give time for goodbyes um, she um, she was sitting in her truck one night um, at uh, what's called the American Legion, which is kind of like a volunteer group um, who, who does stuff for the community and for service people. But they also usually um, have like community centers and also a bar. Um, and so she was sitting in her truck outside there um, just kind of watching the parking lot, because it wasn't that great of a neighborhood. Not bad, but not that great. So she was just kind of watching the parking lot, and um, someone found her dead. And um, so the phone call came to me. You know, I picked up, and I heard someone say that she had died. And I immediately went into emotionless mode and went upstairs, told my mom, just matter-of-factly, grandma just died. And I went back downstairs. I didn't know how to process this. This was probably one of the first times in my life that I had gone into this kind of emotionless state. But I would become very familiar with that emotionless state for the months coming because I did not deal with the passing of my grandmother very well. Or actually, I didn't really deal with it at all um, until much later. But I tell you that, so I can tell you this. My mother, um, a few months later after my grandmother's ashes had been spread and all that, she, um, now I have to give you a little bit of backstory here as well. Um, she had hepatitis C. She's now since been cured. At the time, there were a lot of experimental medications that they were using to try to figure this out. And um, a lot of them messed with her, both physically, mentally. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of ups and downs. And she was always being moved from medication to medication, each one having their own laundry list of potential side effects. So, now that I've told you that, I can tell you that one night I was working at a club and um, I had been working at this club for months and I was at the time I was managing it also kind of serving as security also kind of serving as a DJ depending on who had come in that night and what job needed to be done and um, my mom called me up she wanted to uh, say goodbye she was dead set on the fact that she was going to um, leave, the best way I could say it. Um, and I do mean in, in the sense of the earthly plane. Um, my first reaction was to leave work immediately. But my mom, she knows me. And so she had called uh, to my uh, superior at the time and told him that under no circumstances was he to come in and fill for me because 
of this, that, or the other thing, and um, you know, basically told him that you know I would try to talk my way to get out of work that night. So, so she told me that you know no, you can't leave work. I've made sure of that, and you know I'm I need to say goodbye. And for what seemed like days, but I only know was a matter of maybe an hour or two, I sat there on the phone amidst loud club music, talking to my mother, trying to talk her out of this. I knew if I let her off the phone, it would be the last time I spoke to her. Well, I knew in my mind. I, I didn't actually know. But I, I, I couldn't let her off the phone to call 911, or rather the emergency number if you're outside of the U.S. I think the Brits call it 999. Couldn't let her off the phone there. I couldn't, I, I, I felt powerless. I also needed to say goodbye. And I was filled with all of these emotions. I was mad. I was mad as hell. I wanted to call her a coward. I wanted to call her, you know, stupid. I, I wanted to point out the bad decisions she was making. I wanted nothing more than to try to convince her. And now, something I learned later on in life is that getting angry with people who are making bad decisions often doesn't help. Also, I myself, in my lack of grieving with my grandmother's passing, I also never put together that this could potentially be the, you know, something caused by the medications. So, anyway, um, I spent all that time on the phone with my mother, allowing her to say goodbye, allowing her to say her piece. I was taking notes on what she wanted me to do. Even though I didn't want to, I knew in my heart that it was the wrong thing to do, but I was frozen. I was frozen by fear. I was frozen by emotion. I was frozen by I mean, everything. I needed help in dealing with this, but it was all happening so quickly. Um, very few times in my life have I ever turned to, um, uh, like, like alcohol and, and stuff, but I mean, this, this was one of those where if I would have, I wouldn't have blamed myself because I was not prepared to deal with this. Now, thankfully, my mom did not expire that night. She did not leave us. But I got something a lot of people never get in that experience. And of course, I'm looking for silver linings, but hear me out. I got to hear my mother tell me what she honestly thought about me, about the world. Now, of course, there was a lot of depressed speak there. Yes, of course. But you know, I got to get an insight into her goals in life and, and other things. A lot of people don't ever get to say goodbye to their loved ones. I've had at least one opportunity to say goodbye. Even though it wasn't the final goodbye, I didn't know that at the time. So, my point here in all of this, because I have to wrap this up, is that, um, don't ever assume that someone is taking the easy road out with suicide. Even though that may be the case, they don't feel that way. And don't ever blame someone for not being able to handle what they've been given. Try to help them in whatever way you can. Love people as much as you can. And if you have the opportunity to say something to someone, something that needs to be said, 
say it while you can. Because you never know when that person may be taken away from you. So, that's all I got, guys.